Pearl. Finally, we meet. Yay. I'm really excited to so meet I, you. Oh my gosh, so am I. And I'm glad that you, thank you. I'm glad that you're going to share your story, her story, as we call it. And I think you have a great story to tell. I mean, look at what you do. Uh, let's talk about you and like what, let's start with this. Like whatever made you decide to become an event planner? Do you want the PR story or do you want her story? I want her story, okay? What in life did you say? Yeah. So I guess um, what I love most about being an event planner is that I love to bring people together. Mm -hmm. um, and it's my, my, my whole life is a celebration and I joke, I, I never work a day in my life. <laughs> But um, when I graduated from college, Johnson mm -hmm. & Wales University, ironically, I went to school for culinary arts and food service management, sure. and just a concentration event management, and uh, I got a phone call one day from one of the top five event planners in the nation to become an events coordinator at the Catered Affair at the Boston Public Library. Wow. I thought I had made it. I said that this is right in line with my whole journey mapped out for me. By 22, I was gonna land the job of my dreams. By 25, I was gonna meet that man. By 27, <laughs> we'd be engaged. By 28, we'd be married. By 30, I'd have our first baby. Tyler, right? yes, I saw that movie. Yeah, it's a yeah. Tyler Perry movie. Uh -huh, yeah, <laughs> I, you know, I, I thought I had made it. Um, and uh, I, when I was uh, first hired, I immediately, it was a, it was an amazing, incredible opportunity, but I immediately discovered that I didn't quite know much. Wow. <laughs> so I worked really hard um, with a team that, um, that was uh, committed to excellence, and that's the one thing I learned. It was not an easy time coming into um, uh, the world of luxury in the caliber that I did, so mm -hmm. I worked really hard. And, um, after moving my life from Providence, Rhode Island to Boston, Massachusetts, I was then called in 13 days later and told, you know, you did an amazing job, thank you so much, we're gonna have to lay you off. Um, I didn't know about layoffs in the hospitality industry, which is quite common. Okay. But um, forced to keep my apartments or, you know, or, or remain homeless, I reached out to a few friends and said, hey, you know, these are the skills that I had, uh, that I have. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that uh, that winter alone, I probably applied to 300 jobs wow. and was told that I was under, uh, not qualified um, and I didn't have what it takes. So it was kind of an act of desperation that I fell into it. Mm -hmm. That was about six years ago. Um, and I'm glad to say that you know, from this, from just believing in myself and surrounding myself around um, positive people, I, I was able to kind of stay afloat and keep my apartment. <laughs> so you weren't homeless or living in your car. Yes. No, no. Well, although uh, there were times where um, that you know that was uh, that that seemed like it might have been my reality. Um, one thing uh, as an entrepreneur. We always hear all the, the great stories about being entrepreneurs, that we're our own boss and that we get to you know, believe in our dreams, chase our dreams and change the world. Mm -hmm. It's not always like that. Um, many times during my, um, my journey, there were financial struggle was a huge um, thing. And sometimes I thought I was crazy. My family would say, Pearl, what are you doing? You're 23 years old starting this company. You don't have the experience. You don't have the capital. You know, all the odds are against you. Mm -hmm. um, I, was, I was grateful though that I had one or two people along the way that I would tell my dream to and they were nice enough not to tell me what they thought. <laughs> uh, 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 and it's I, I joke about it now they but um, it. they let yeah. me go with it mm -hmm. and um, I really had to be just very naive enough to think I was so grateful that I didn't know what I didn't know at the time and I, I really believe that I could do it mm -hmm. and even though there were times where my bank account said differently um, people around me in my circle said differently and I, I stuck with it mm -hmm. and um, I allowed my work to really speak for itself you so you've come out very well but what um 
And you, you went through a lot. What was the greatest challenge that you had to overcome to keep yourself going? Believing, I believe that the greatest challenge that I had to face or it had to acknowledge mm -hmm. was that everything that I needed to succeed was in me. And in an ideal world, we think we're going to succeed with the support of others. Um, there were many times where not only did I doubt myself, but others doubted of me around me. Um, even my, uh, my journey to be in college <laughs> was, uh, was quite difficult. Mm -hmm. I wish that I had the support of uh, my family and friends, but I realized that if I wanted something bad enough, I'm gonna really have to believe in it mm -hmm. and put the work in to really make that happen, and I did. Uh, when I became an entrepreneur at the age of 23, everyone around me was twice my age and I would go to clients and ask them to sign on the line and I knew it was in their head, how old are you, how long have you been doing this? And it was a question I was asked so many times. And being in a luxury field, there weren't quite many women that looked like me. Mm -hmm. And that was challenging. Um, being able to feel comfortable enough to ask and be vulnerable enough to um, say that I didn't know. Eventually I did, <laughs> but um, I think that the biggest challenge that I had to overcome was to realize that everything that I needed was really inside me and really believe that I could do that. That's great. And a lot of people don't understand that and they don't know it. Mm -hmm. And you were 23. I was 23. 23. <laughs> going into your plan. I'm impressed that you had a plan because a lot of people, especially at that age, they don't. Um, and at the same time, sometimes you have a plan, but you have to realize sometimes it goes a different way, right? And you do what? Take the ball and run with it. Exactly. Now at 23, it was a very completely different story. I didn't think that I had a plan, but I also knew that I wanted to succeed. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the foundation. I had a dream. Mm -hmm. I knew that I wanted to touch the lives of so many. And I think that is what what drove me that. So now in what you're doing and where you are, what do you do or what do you, um, how do you feel that um, you're helping other women? Mm -hmm. um, and especially like you said, women of color. I mean, women that are not in this space and it's tough to get into this space. What do you do or, or how do you see what you're doing would help people, women like that? Um, great question. Even, at, for as long as I can remember, giving back was really important to me. Um, mm -hmm. And not necessarily in the most conventional ways as we think about, it might be time, resources. And I believe that um, giving back is so important to me as well too, because it was those people who have given their time, their energy, their advice, in the times that I needed it that really helped me on my journey. Mm -hmm. uh, about one year ago to this day, I started Toast, the Empowered Black Women's Collaborative. So we are a group of about 450 um, members mm -hmm. and we range from about seven different cities. And the intent is to simply lift while we climb, to create a space where we can ask those difficult questions. Mm -hmm. You know, it's nice, you, I, I feel that, you know, in this day and age, we are very DIYers. We wanna do it ourselves but there is something to be said about being able to ask and leverage the advice of someone who has essentially have done Absolutely. what we're, we're trying to do. Um, so we meet seasonally over brunches. We have an online group where we um, ask just the craziest questions. And um, it's so wonderful to see how many connections have been made. Mm -hmm. We really wanna create a space where we understand that everything that we need is within us and that we harvest relationships amongst our group that will empower, um, to empower each other and champion each other. And above all, it's not enough to have a dream. We, there's an educational component tied into it, toast, right. to obtain anything, start thinking. We also want to, um, we also strive to introduce resources into, from our community into the group that, we, that needs it. So um, that, is, um, that, is, that is my way that um, all of my experiences have 
really led to this. And sometimes when I'm speaking to someone who's just getting started or I know that everything that I've been through was simply just for this purpose. That is great. And that's the great thing of like what we're trying to do here with Out the Door. Like Absolutely. it's a collective of women and it's like networking. You could do it in person. You could do it online. You um, trying to set up this whole series is so that real business women like you can tell your story and real people that are reading this or on the website can say, wow, maybe I should talk to her. And that's what you do. And then you can also talk about toast, maybe even further, right? And get them involved in that. Absolutely. That is good. And, and um, it would be great if you share more about that when, you know, when something comes up, mm -hmm. let us know. Okay. We, we'll post it and let people know. Maybe they should come and check you out or find out more about it. Absolutely. Once a season, we have a huge soiree. It's a really great time, lots of great food. The planner in me likes to, you know, make sure that the table is set for queens. So oh, wow. We'll be definitely sharing I some information. Like I like it. I feel underdressed at this time for a story <laughs> with her. So, but when that Everyone happens. Everyone is welcome. You may come as you are. Oh, All right. I like it. This is really good. So now before we finish this, but tell me, what else would you like to say um, to, to impart to the people that are reading this? Because you've been through a lot. There's times you didn't know what you didn't know, then you found out, then you had to go through this, but you sound like you have overcome it with grace and that you've moved on. And um, again, I can't say enough. I go on your website, I was like, oh my gosh, who is this? You just look so elegant. Your website is perfect and it's just like nice. So <laughs> more power to you. But yeah, you, you. yeah, please share what you think that you people um, who are reading this or who were watching this at the time should know. Sure. I would say to celebrate exactly where you are. Even, <laughs> I, I shared with you just moments ago, I was so nervous to um, tell my story oh, yeah. because I felt that I was not at the epitome of, you know, finished. But we're never finished. I was here. <laughs> we're never finished. We are never finished. Six foot under, then we're finished. But exactly. until then, yeah, so it's in the a meantime, job. exactly. Mm -hmm. So in the meantime, celebrate where you are. Celebrate the small successes. Mm -hmm. Celebrate everything that you're grateful for, and mm -hmm. you will see more come your way. Um, and if I could give that advice to anyone, it's uh, something that I, I practice intentionally now: being grateful, living with gratitude. It attracts more, but definitely celebrate where you are and realize that life is just a, I'm realizing personally that life is simply just a journey mm -hmm. and we just have to keep moving in the right direction and it's okay to take 10 steps forward and a thousand steps back, but you just got to keep going. Keep going. Exactly. Aunt Pearl, I am grateful for the fact that you showed up and you shared your story. Your first story is really good. Thank and you. I think that um, people will get a lot out of it. I really do. Thank you. Thank you. This has been great. It's been great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.